A relatable complaint is that our obsession with Christmas is strong to an annoying degree, more specifically referring to the repetitive nature of Christmas music. Hearing the same few songs on repeat for close to two months can get grating, and with social media, these frustrations can be expressed more easily than ever before. A recent viral trend that's been capitalizing on the world's Christmas angst has been Whamageddon in which you try to avoid hearing Last Christmas by Wham for as long as possible during the holiday season. Although the game isn't particularly well known, I always found it amusing, but I was also curious about where this game started and why. So today we'll be taking a look at the history of Wham's Christmas classic, and the origins of Whamageddon. Last Christmas was a single released on December 3rd, 1984 in the US by Wham, a British pop duo consisting of lead singer George Michael and not George Michael, Andrew Ridge. The idea for the song came when the duo visited George's parents around the holiday season. Michaels wrote the song in his childhood bedroom and basically produced the whole thing, with him playing every instrument on the track despite having no training in any of them. In doing so, the song is very simplistic, which fortunately left more emphasis on Michael's lyrics and singing, which was the emotional backbone of the song. The instrumental was made to sound bare bones and seasonally blissful to contrast with the themes of recovering from heartbreak. This emotion would pay off with the song peaking at number 2 on the UK singles chart behind a Christmas charity single featuring many popular UK artists. Since Michael was also involved in that single, he donated all the profits from last Christmas to the same charity as them, which is just heartwarming. The song was initially released as the B-side of a vinyl release of the single Everything She Wants from their second album Make It Big. This was back in the dark ages, when music was a circle, and would later become its own track and finally release in the US as an extended mix off the greatest hits album music from the edge of heaven. Although it was technically released internationally in 84, the original version most are familiar with actually wasn't officially released as a single in America until 2014, where it reached the Billboard Top 40 for the first time ever. I'll let you guess which month it peaked in. Ever since its release, Last Christmas has been a staple of the holiday season. You can tell it's a pop classic because it got George Michael sued for plagiarism, but this success might have some unintended consequences. Despite the song's popularity and charm, cynicism for the holidays in general was unfortunately quickly building. Christmas is, in all likelihood, the most popular holiday in the world, especially in America, but there's surprisingly only a small handful of Christmas songs that get routinely played, and a lot of them are old standards like Jingle Bell Rock or Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. There's a lot of rocks on this list. I got a rock. And so, there's a long-standing frustration with how much this music is played at nauseum in December. With Last Christmas being a more recent edition, and with it being a more more traditional pop song, it could be played on repeat with less hassle than older Christmas music, which made its overplay that much more extreme. It feels like avoiding this music during the Christmas season would be a challenge. You could almost make a game out of how long you could go without hearing this throughout December, hmm? The inception point for games like Whamageddon is impossible to document, but evidence suggests that it was a regional game started within European youth that began in the late 90s through to the early to mid 2000s. It was made in multiple groups without any real standardization. The earliest instance of Whamageddon's concept online is an off-topic thread on the forum GT Planet in November of 2010 titled GT Planet vs Wham. The wording in the thread implies the game existed much earlier than this post, but this is as far back as anyone can find, so there's little reservations about this being the first instance. Most people replying to the thread are confused as if the game's a new concept to them, but many seem into the idea and announce their participation. Nominations on this thread specifically would continue until 2012, and it has since become a holiday tradition on the forum, albeit not under the Whamageddon name. The game continued silently afterwards, but it was still a very impromptu challenge, and there were no clear guidelines on how the game should be played in context outside of the forum. That was until 2016, when a group of Europeans took the Whamageddon challenge into their own hands. The official website for Whamageddon, along with its Facebook page, was created in December of 2016. It's managed by a team called the Wham Fathers, consisting of Rasmus Lethbjer, Oliver Noglebake, Soren Gelinek, 
and the site's founder, Thomas Mertz. Mertz said he created the site since he remembers playing the game as a teen in the mid-2000s and wanted to help the cause as he was excited to see it was slowly gaining momentum on social media. Though the launch would turn out to be unfortunate timing, with George Michael's death occurring coincidentally on Christmas Day of that year. GT Planet would eventually transition to avoiding Mariah Carey's All I Want For Christmas Is You out of respect, but the Whamageddon team didn't let the news lower their spirits. The website was initially bare bones, with it just showing the days until the game started and ended, but by 2017 it became more fleshed out with a rule list and a button to automatically post to Facebook when you lost the game. The rules for the game were also finally set in stone, clarifying that only hearing the original Wham! version of the song counted as a loss, meaning covers and remixes were safe for consumption, and that tricking people into hearing the song wasn't prohibited, but it is frowned upon. Around 2017, the Facebook page started to pick up some steam, with a few thousand page likes and a consistently large group of participants, but it was still a niche challenge without much mainstream attention. It did get a boost from a few articles on sites like Lifehacker and endorsements from many European radio stations, but neither of its first years had any incident that brought it to the public at large. Thankfully, 2018 would be a much bigger year for Whamageddon. On December 1st of that year, British comedian and TV personality Jonathan and Ganathan would tweet out his participation and an image showing the rules of play to his over 400,000 Twitter followers. This was the biggest push the challenge had received, and arguably it single-handedly brought the game to its peak popularity. This attention got the challenge articles from places like The Independent and Metro, as well as a segment on one of the most popular daytime talk shows in Denmark. Whamageddon was now an internationally viral sensation, and the team had no signs of slowing down. 2019 saw the biggest year in the history of the game, which caught the attention of London's Great Ormond Street Hospital charity, who chose to partner their annual Christmas drive with the challenge. That year saw a 25% increase in overall donations, and a 200% increase in online interactions for the charity. This was a pretty noble initiative for the Whamageddon team to undertake, and it shows that something as wacky as this can still bring a positive influence into the world. At the time of this video's release, Whamageddon is an ongoing tradition, and the team show no signs of stepping down anytime soon. Although I'm not the type of person who would participate in a trend like this, I do respect the people running the game a lot. It's rare nowadays to find a social media trend like this that was created organically and made solely for the purpose to have a good time with other people online. Sometimes you forget that a huge advantage of social media is connecting people worldwide to participate in the same activities. And even if it's a niche, goofy game like Whamageddon, there will always be a net positive impact in my eyes. This video is less of a telling of a story and more of a showcasing of an oddity. I just wanted to get something out during the holiday season, and I was always interested in where this game came from and how it got so big. This video may seem smaller or more domestic than the previous ones, but I still hope you enjoyed me telling the story and maybe introducing you to Whamageddon. Be sure to like the video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more of this. I'll see you all the next video.